Ian Norton is off to work, but his is no ordinary job. He's Tasmania's very own snake man, a title he's worked on since he was a little tiger himself. When I was just a little boy, my brother brought home a python from a circus. My next encounter with snakes was I bought a dead tiger snake for five shillings. And I brought it home and played with it all day until my father caught me and threatened to belt me to within an inch of my life unless I got rid of it. And then, of course, as soon as I was old enough to, uh, to go out on my own with a bike and into the country, I started hunting snakes and I've just had a fascination with them ever since. These are tiger snakes. A bite from one of these snakes without treatment means about seven hours before death. You're looking at the fourth most venomous snake in the world, five times more venomous than a cobra, eight times more venomous than a rattlesnake. They're not everyone's idea of a pet, and their bite is a little less forgiving than a cute puppy. If I was to put my hand somewhere near this snake, you can see what's going to happen. Straight away, you can see the venom on the pole. Now, when you consider that about as much as what will fit on the head of a pin can kill an average adult, there's a considerable amount of overkill. In fact, I was bitten in the pit here in the early 90s by a similar snake to uh, what you see here and spent some time in the twilight zone. So I'm well aware of the potential of the animal. Ian has put years of near-death experiences into running workshops to teach people to manage and relocate problem snakes. Most people that are bitten are people that are interfering with snakes. It's not they're bitten accidentally. They're either trying to kill it or move it away. A snake crawls into a caravan park, someone has to deal with it. But unless you have some sort of training and you've got your first aid in place, you should never go near snakes, especially wild ones. The modern snake catcher's toolkit is a bit more sophisticated than the old garden shovel. Well, the bag usually has everything, so it's the field pack. It has a mini raptor, which is a tool for picking up snakes, so you don't actually have to handle them in your hand. So we carry that. Radios, we always have phones. Always in the kit, we carry a flare. In the pack itself, we carry broad bandages. And these are the sorts of things that can save your life in the event of a bite. If you're prompt and effective with your bandaging, then you can buy yourself many, many hours. Where'd the others go? Look, one here. <laughs> Being science week, we've got activities at the museum and we do school tours. So I need a couple and these two are my chosen victims. So this one here, I might add, is extremely quiet. <laughs> Jeez, that was close. Complacency is what will bring you undone eventually. If you're complacent around snakes, you don't have the respect for them, eventually you'll be bitten. I know the snakes that I can take certain liberties with. Uh, the bulk of wild snakes in Tasmania, I always use equipment, but these particular animals that I'm working with all the time, uh, I can scale down a little, but I still have to be aware that, like crocodiles, they have no affection for me, and they can quite easily bite the hand that feeds them. They're great things to photograph, they're great to admire, to enjoy, but handling them or interfering with them in any way, you're inviting trouble. Believe it or not, they just don't come up and bite people. You've got to do something to provoke it. And as I say, it might be something as simple as moving. <laughs>